Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about defeating consume players. Consume decks are extremely easy to uh, know that you're up against it. Once you see the Unseen Elder, you know you're up against a consume player. Enya, for example, would be the complete opposite. You don't know what the Enya player is going to be playing until they play a few cards. Now, I want to point out that the Solano Harpy is probably the most powerful bronze card in the game. I also want to point out that my opponent only pulled two Arrakuses out of his deck. Uh, he probably has one in his hand. And I also want to point out that removing the egg from the board is like removing six points for my opponent. He's going to consume that card eventually, so getting rid of that egg now prevents him from six, getting six points in the future. Now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to remove two more eggs for removing an extra 18 points from his board and adding 12 points to my board for, Mac for a total of 30 points. I, I think a 30 point leader is a pretty good play. Yeah, there's that Arrakis from his uh, hand. He uh, didn't draw earlier. I'm not going to pull all my Blue Mountain Commandos into the range row because it's not that good. So here's my uh, my opponent's leader card. He's getting five points from his uh, base strength and then six points from the Arrakis Behemoth. It's not. It's only 11 points for that play compared to my 30 points earlier. Yeah, my opponent's not going to win this round. I have just out-tempoed a Consume player, doing the classic Arrakis Behemoth, Solano Harpy, Vran Warrior, Solano Harpy, Unseen Elder opening. My opponent passes, I get my Bamboozle off, not that it matters. <laughs> We're going to go into the next round. Because I need card advantage and I don't want to have any more cards in my opponent's graveyard than I uh, than is advisable, I'm going to just pass. Nice, simple, cold pass. Again, my opponent is uh, taking some time to think about what they want to get rid of, and they go with the uh, Water Hag, which is a surprise. I don't usually see the Water Hag these days. A really good card against... Uh, monster decks is the Hawker Smuggler because they play a lot of cards that just pop out onto the board. I'm going to use the <laughs> Shrooms on that. I was not expecting him to have more of them on, uh, but you know, he had all three Neckers in his hand. That's unfortunate. So I see a, th a bunch of eight strength cards on my opponent's side of the board, so I think a Scorch would be great. Unfortunately, he has the Fiend messing up my Scorch. He had to play that Fiend now as opposed to like a little later. So here I have had to make a difficult decision. Do I Scorch one of my units and then kill off a Grave Hag? Or do I call his bluff and consider him not to have a Grave Hag and just say, uh, just play my brand now? I won out in that scenario, but. That Scorch ended up being a liability. You need to be careful not to overcommit to the Scorch, because sometimes the Scorch will backfire just like then. Well, I hope that was helpful for you guys, and you learned a lot. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, upvote the deck on Gwent TV, and leave a like. Everything helps. Bye. No matter what you people say, I'm gonna do my thing my way. What you people do I'm gonna do my thing much better than you No matter what you say or do Oh boy, you're out of luck It's gonna roll right off of me Like water off the back of a duck